Okay, what we're demonstrating here is the usage of OpenCL, which is what allows you to do uh, generalized compute on graphics cores. And specifically what we're showing here on a PowerVR SGX 540 core is image processing using the GPU. So what we're applying here to this high resolution image is a sharpened brightness, contrast and saturation combined filter. And currently we're doing that processing on uh, the screen here, which is running at a frame rate of about 42 frames per second. And this is running on OpenCL, so as you would expect, the CPU load is significantly uh, reduced and really only using a couple of percentage points here of one of the dual core A9 1 gigahertz processors within this platform. So really showing that the GPU is doing all the heavy lifting within the platform here. Now we've also connected this platform up to uh, a power supply here, so stable 5 volts being provided as well as a dynamic uh, ampere usage and we're seeing here a low 0.6 ampere being used by the platform while doing GPU compute operation. Now we've also gone and implemented the same algorithm onto the CPU. First as a single threaded application uh, implementation and what we see here is that one of the CPU cores has come fully up and in terms of performance what we're looking at here is about 14 frames per second. So allowing you to do this dynamic processing on a single thread. Power consumption versus the GPU has gone up a bit, going to 0.69, so about 0.05 more amps being used. So not a dramatic increase, uh, but 14 frames per second of performance. Now, if we go to a multi-threaded implementation, we see that the second CPU core comes alive and performance has increased from 14 to 24 frames per second. But that comes at a cost, and specifically, we've now gone to 0.8 amperes of power consumption. That actually means that compared to when the GPU was doing the processing at 0.6 we've added 0.2 amperes of power and that means a whole watt of extra power consumption. Now the other thing to look at again is the performance so we're now at 24 FPS of performance if we go back to the GPU you're seeing we're actually delivering 42 frames per second so not only are we using a watt less power to do this operation we're also executing almost twice as fast so that really shows you the benefit of doing general purpose compute the heavy lifting within your mobile device mobile phones tablets using the GPU rather than ever increasing numbers of CPU cores the second demo we're showing here is a high polygon throughput demos. One of the concerns we sometimes hear about tile-based deferred rendering engines such as the, the PowerVR SGX 540 platform that we see here is that as polygon rates would increase that there would be problems handling those scenes. So rather than spend a lot of words on this, we thought that a demonstration would be a much easier and simple message to show that high geometry counts are really not a problem for a PowerVR tile-based engine. So what we have here is objects constructed out of 35,000 cubes and these cubes are all individually animated, morphing between shapes, being pushed around at 30 to 40 frames per second, so almost submitting 15 million triangles per second and a submission of more than 400,000 triangles within each frame, really proving that very high geometry complexities are not a problem for PowerVR tile-based rendering implementations. Okay, what we're showing you here is a very advanced lighting engine running on uh, a high-end SGX 543 multi-core platform. And this is actually a radiosity-based lighting implementation running fully in the hardware. And the key thing with radiosity is that it doesn't just deal with direct light impact, but also allows you to model indirect light uh, and basically the reflection of light elements. And you can show that dynamically here in this demonstration. As you see, the corridor has quite faint light but if I slightly adjust the light position you see that all the reflection of lights from one part of the wall onto others is starting to be modeled so you start to see these highlights coming through and the great thing with this demonstration is the light is fully dynamic so you can see as the lights falls into the scene there's more reflection whereas if the light moves away you get much darker situations and all of this interaction is fully dynamic calculated on the GPU creating very realistic light. 
if we compare that with what a lot of the games today use, you would not see any of that bounce interaction. And again, we can show that as well by turning this off. So you see a very simple shadow map implementation here. So you see the corridor becomes completely black, but if we turn on the radiosity, you see all that bounce of light going around. So very easy to see the impact that radiosity has on the scene and now running in real time on mobile tablet platforms.